as a uh, county, I think we've probably underappreciated Paul Conroy over the course of the last two decades. Um, I think he's been an ex- like a genuinely exceptional Galway footballer for nearly two decades. And it's just, it's impossible what he's done in a lot of ways. You know, like he comes on the team as a, a senior team as a 19-year-old. He's still there. He's still absolutely vital to kind of our chances this year. And he's just, he's never given less than 100%. His attitude has always just been absolutely spot on. Uh, I think he's an incredible ambassador for the county as well. Um, and it's just, you know, if any deals I've ever had, just a, a great fella, just a genuinely great fella. And I think we've maybe underestimated him and maybe taken him a bit for granted uh, over the years. And I just, I, I, I just, I have, I have a, a mountain of respect for, for Paul Conroy, to be honest. The Maroon and White Pod brought to you by CityLink. For bookings, timetables, updates and any other information, head to citylink.ie. This week now on the Maroon and White Pod, I'm delighted to be joined by former Galway and former South Hill Knock McCarran manager John O'Mahony and Mars Brosnan from the Irish Examiner to look back on Galway's draw at Roscommon yesterday in the Hyde Park, uh, nine points apiece. Uh, both teams settled for the point in the end uh, after round two of the league. John, coming to you first, uh, a much improved performance from Galway yesterday compared to the previous week against Bale. It was. I mean, you, uh, leaving Salt Hill on, on our Pier Stadium on the previous Sunday, you just, it was the worst performance I ever saw from Galway, you know, over the years. They just seemed leaderless and, and uh, you know, losing the individual battles and all the rest of it. It seemed as if the, you know, Mayo had obviously coordination or cohesion among themselves but it didn't seem to be much of a plan from Gaul's point of view but the attitude was totally transformed yesterday and I see Boric Joyce was quoted as saying about the psychologist uh, so I think what she did during the week was more important than any training that was done because <laughs> even when they hit, when they, hit, they did a they did a, a warm up yesterday I think for about 25 minutes uh, and it it looked intense, and they were playing backs, and they nearly they nearly were holding up the start of the game, you know. So and and they started on the front foot, and obviously it was common were lulled into a false uh, sense of confidence, having the Bridget's guys back, and obviously heard about how incompetent Galway were the previous week. But you know that's Galway all over. But in, in the sense, that, but they they. It, there was certainly more hope for Galway leaving Hyde Park yesterday. I'd say of the two of them, two teams, I'd say Pori Joyce was the happier manager. What was the one thing that you were most impressed with yesterday from Galway, John? Well, the attitude, like it's, it was just the attitude they were, they were getting to the like they were in, against Mayo. They were, you know, starting off maybe leading the ahead of. The, the Mayo, pers- Mayo player for the ball, but the, the, the Mayo per- player just outpaced them and got to it first. Yesterday, it was totally different. Uh, I mean, the control that game for the first 15 minutes, I'd say they had, I don't know, 80% of the possession. And maybe if they were a little bit braver, like Cahal Sweeney's goal, that, our goal shot that just shaved the post, if that had gone in, you know, I'd say goal would have gone on to win. But it... it uh, so Paul Conroy's return at midfield, amazingly, uh, you know, there was leadership, Paul Conroy, and he brought the best out of John Maher yesterday, he looked to be transformed from last week. And uh, Matthew Tierney, like the, the, the lift that the, that point from the sideline gave and all the rest of it. So you had a lot of the winning behaviours where all the behaviours that had previous week was losing behaviours. Uh, and that was strange because... When Mayo ever play Galway, you know there's there's always an edge to it and all the rest of it. So it was it was hard to explain. And even the, the in in Pier Stadium, like there wasn't even the buzz among the Mayo supporters out. You know, numbered Galway supporters, but there was no buzz there either. But yesterday, it, it was normal service resumed from an attitude point of view, and leadership point of view. And when you consider who Galway have to come back if they 
I mean, if they could get some of them back uh, sooner rather than later than a fortnight's break, now, you know, anything could happen. But they, they need to continue that attitude to, you know, obviously uh, uh, coming from the league into the championship because you could see yesterday, like, the both teams were desperate to win, but they, they, they were, that was trumped by, they were also had a fear, a fear of losing. And I think the last 12 minutes, I think there was no score. Like, so there were, Galway were rushing their shots at that stage and uh, Roscommon had a couple of bad wides as well. So like, if that was a championship match, some of the team, one of the teams would grab it by the scruff of the neck in that last 10 minute period and, and emerge, you know, as, as four or five point winners, I would imagine. Uh, when it gets to the top of the ground stuff and all that, but that was the big difference yesterday. The call was attitude, uh, and and was Commons kind of, I suppose, expecting to win because of the reinforcements and because of Gaul were so bad the previous week. But they forgot that you have to make it happen. You can't let it happen. You know? Mars, obviously, last week there, it's safe to say there was a lot of negativity and everything around Galway football after the result, but. Going on yesterday from being in the hide, what did you think of it? I, I agree totally with, with John. It's funny, I, I actually I asked that that question. I didn't ask what a psychologist now, I just asked a general question about what did he what did Port think was the difference in yeah. their approach the week previous to this week? Just a, just a general question. And he was the one who brought up the psychologist, which to me now he said at the time he, he was he was he was genuinely baffled. Like I could see it in him. He was kind of bewildered. He said, I don't know. But the fact he brought up psychologist, I think he Somewhere within that camp, there's a sense that it was a mental thing. That it's not yeah. about who was missing. It's not about yeah. what was done yeah. in training or did they train on the Saturday, any of that. It was, it was a psychological thing in their approach on the day. And that, I, I I got that sense, definitely, Paul, uh, yesterday, that that was different. There was a different tempo about it. And I, I just doubled down on what John said. The man who embodied that for me was Paul Conroy. Like just, some of the attackers might have been borderline. He, he left the fist in on, on Smith there in the first half, which... There was a hard hit that it hit, and I think he was involved in that when Lennon had to go off for, for that tackle as well. But just real bite, real intense, you know, a complete opposite to what we saw in per stadium the week previous. And um, so that was that was a big standout. I, you're right, there was a bit of negativity around maybe post that game, but at the same time, it's it's January and there's probably come up with all the mitigating factors. So if you just hit those benchmarks, if you just hit like show a bit of intent, show a bit of aggression, get minutes into some lads who will hopefully develop to come and keep players, the likes of Neil McNeely and you know, Karin Boak got a run yesterday. That stuff is, I think that's the ass. If I ever rolled that bar, definitely against my own, but to my mind, they, they hit it yesterday. Just just going on that, uh, Paul Connery, someone you mentioned there, and we had Kieran Murphy on the podcast before Christmas, and he was just saying that Paul Connery is probably one of the most underappreciated goalie footballers, and Going by yesterday's performance, it just summed it up in a nutshell, really, didn't it? Yeah, big, big time. Yeah, just from the from minute one, yeah, uh, the difference he makes. I, I have to say, I even thought against my old Paul when he came on. I, I know it was hard to give anybody huge credit from that game, but he was trying to make stuff happen. Like he did throw a bit of, a bit of front foot mentality and was trying to to get them going. And there's evidence of it again, definitely uh, at the weekends. Probably now, given Peter Cook's absence, it's a it's a position where there probably is the least depth. You know, I there, you know, we'll get fingers crossed, we'll see Kenny McDade back come championship, Sean Kelly, Tim Comer, not really sure what's going on with Shane Walsh, but there are at least there are other options there. And it's very hard to pull the pieces together for if, for example, if you were to miss a, a Paul Connery, what are you exactly are you going to do in, in midfield come championship? So he is he's just an integral player to the way they play. Um I, I heard uh, Murph talk about him at the time and kind of mentioned the all the you know, the positive stuff is uh, ambition to actually kick the ball to, to get them forward. You saw a bit of that yesterday. But the one stage in the first half, I don't remember the Gleason was forced long and Connor just caught a uh, kick out right underneath the stand, underneath the, the broken stand, turn and give a kick pass in. You're thinking all that needed was one more pass and it would have been a, a really slick move. And he was at the heart of a lot of that. So, yeah, he, he set the tone. He's been doing it for, I mean, I, I feel like I'm, I've been working in journalism 10 years. I feel for the last 10 years, I'm praising Paul Connery at some stage during that year. So I suppose, I don't know if there's much more to be said, but he is just, he's a colossal. Yeah, John, he showed yesterday, Ross Common were squeezing that kick out. Gleeson had no other choice but to go along and Connery time after time 
it was just great to keep him going in it around that middle third with some of the kickouts he won. He was, and then what he did as well, you see, that inspired John Maher to be totally transformed as well. So yeah. not only did he play well himself, but I think that he, he gave everyone confidence in that area. And you'd have to say for, for lots of long periods in the game was common where outclassed in the middle of the field, you know, and then just met even, you know, hadn't uh, had one of his all-star games, as it were, you know. So, yes, it, it just... And, and Matthew Tierney as well, like, he he came on... Did he come on against Mayo, I think, or what, did he start, yeah. maybe? Came on uh, after 20 minutes against came Mayo. Came on, yeah, but he, he looked, you know, he didn't... But yesterday, it was a different attitude, like, it was the, you know, the, 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 the long-range shot in the second half point, a vital one, but also that free from the, from the, you know, into the teeth of the wind to judge it correctly and so on. So that's what inspired, you know, those kind of things are inspirational. It brings the best out of younger players, especially around them. And another thing for yesterday that gives some potential, I think, to Galway going down the road, Sean Fitzgerald at full back looked good. Um, uh, you know, and if he just could make that his own position, uh, then the potential of using Sean Kelly some other way is enormous. Uh, so I, 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 on the injury thing, I think I think what's happened, maybe it's just my opinion, but I think Galway are very cautious this year not to rush anybody and to give them proper rehab because everyone knows that, and I think Sean Kelly admitted it in an interview after the championship was over, that he should never have played against Mayo last year in Pierce Stadium. And he missed the county final then. I think maybe that was a hamstring injury, but it was probably compensating for his ankle injury. Uh, so, you know, I, I that's why I say that it, when, like, Killian McDade is crucial to that to that team as well. So, you know, you have three or four All-Stars, Liam, Liam Silk and, uh, you know, or Damien Comer and all those. So if they could get a... a, 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 a you know, a free, a free season... From from injury, I think there is possibilities for Galway to be honest. Uh, but again, I suppose that's down the road. A lot more has to happen, you know. But I think tr- Galway have to go up to Tyrone now, and Tyrone will be will be you know smarting from yesterday. Uh, and uh, it was common have to go up to Dublin. So the next round, will, you know, the the league form will be taking shape in, in a big way, you know. Just on that uh, start by Galway, uh, obviously against the breeze in the first half. But one particular incident stood out. When when Killian Lucaron Mars gets that ball inside the 13 and he just decided to take on his man, maybe there was an opportunity there to pull the trigger, but the angle then was a bit tight, but it, it showed his intent straight away. Yeah, you're talking about his fisted point, the, the second yeah. one, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, do, yeah, yeah. I I, I agree to Yeah, it showed his, his intent. Now there's there's a flip side to that too. Um like I think uh, I might have carried carrying his biggest fan going, but he probably carried the ball into contact a couple of times yesterday. Well, maybe it wasn't on. Maybe he just had to, to ship it out slightly. And even I thought Liam probably took on the first shot was definitely on the one he pulled wide. The second one, I don't think that was that was on. You're coming, you're you're trying to kick with the teeth to that win, but you're coming back on your instep. And as after coming back, you just you no know, momentum coming with it. That you're you're if you're doing that, I think on your instep, you want to kind of get it. Uh, it's nearly like a floater, put it up into the air. So trying to kick directly across like that probably wasn't gonna gonna work out. But yeah, it showed. A huge amount of intent, and I thought that for anybody who wasn't there, like I don't know the two of you were, I thought that there's no getting away from how you know you walk into the stadium, you through that main stand, you look up, you see the post rattling in the wind, you think, Oh, here we go again. Like it's just going to be there's no getting away from the context that the conditions it makes it so harder to kick the ball. Uh, for the first half goes along fairly familiar lines to I know people aren't crazy about it, but it's common to decide, Okay, we're playing with the wind here, we're going to take on shots from whenever we can to the extent where the first three. The three frees, the first three shots, and they all go wide. Conor Carroll tries two. The second free, he must have been across the 65 for that one that he tries. Um, again, and, and again, you can't understand why. But so on the flip side, then Galway do the classic kind of old Keir O'Neill trick. You're playing against the breeze. So what do you do? You hold the ball for ages. You milk all the phases. I know people don't like it, but trying to make the game that bit slower, drop back into the 45. And as soon as they come into that zone, they can just shoot from outside, or if they come in and you hit like a, with a vengeance, then. Um, so that, that, that was the way they, they set up. And you're trying to, you're probably hoping that when they can get out or if they can get a turnover and, and get out of it, that the boys in front would punch holes. And by and large, I think, like, I think they showed well. There is, but for 
both teams, I think you should cut us off flashes. I thought you know, Ben Ricardo was on the fringes of the game for the first half, and then he comes in and kicks a great point on his left foot after. Kind of keeps showing on all day. On the flip side, I thought Keelan Karin probably had to come off. The only thing, Paul, for the, he was on the yellow, and then he had another foul in that corner. And uh, maybe you're going to bring it up later. The, the refereeing in this game, I don't think he was going to get much leeway. So I, I, I think that was a, a cautionary call that maybe it's better to take him off here than risk throwing that line. Um, and maybe if it was the other way around, maybe they would have taken off Liam and left him out there. But yeah, like he, the main thing, as Park said when we asked him after, the main thing is that they're getting action. He's promised that they're going to get more action down the line. They're going to they'll get exposed to this. They'll learn so much from a from a day like yesterday, and that's a that's a net positive. John, just on that when Morris is talking about Liam O'Keefe and Killian O'Carroll in particular, that they're going to learn so much from this. How valuable is it for these two players to be getting minutes? Ah, it's very valuable. It's very valuable. You're, 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 you see what's happening yesterday. Compare that with what happened in the FPD final, final, or was it the F, was it the final where they put out against Roscommon, where they put out a full fifteen rookies, if you like. And that's yeah. not the way. To, that's not the way to test players whether they have the. I know is it, or Penila, it was it in they got nine or ten points that night. Uh, that was O'Coron, yeah. O'Coron, sorry, yeah, yes, yeah, it was. And he looked, you know, he looked to be the real deal. But I think the real, the, the benefit of a game like yesterday is that, you know, their backs were to the wall and so on. And they will learn so much from it and, and, and to, be, to be brought in there. So, you know, the, 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 there'll be a scrap for places. Uh, and, uh, you know, the panel will be deepened as a result of, as a result of that. Uh, and, and that will definitely benefit them. Uh, going down the road, absolutely. But you know, it, there certainly was positivity there uh, for Galway yesterday. It was common, like they 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 both teams probably played better nearly against the wind uh, yeah. in some respects. Uh, I saw Galway actually coming out after half time. They came out a bit early, and they started practicing long, long kicks from you know from 40, 45 yards. Obviously, trying to get their eye in, and that was the instruction. Obviously, uh, you know, to to shoot from distance because they felt they had the accuracy. And and uh, Kieran Malloy got a very good point on Matthew Tierney, but they rushed their, a few of them rushed shots as well, and and didn't have the composure uh, to maybe take advantage of, of of the wind in that case. But that'll come with time. But it's you know, it's it was a great learning curve for those young. For the Aussie young players, as regards was common, I think when Brian Stack came on, he made a huge difference. Uh, he's a he's a real talented player wherever he's playing, uh, and Ben O'Carroll is the real deal as well. So you know they have um, they have a lot of uh, expectancy of a of of a, a, a few ambushes or a couple of ambushes in the Connacht Championship this year, I'd say, uh, and. Uh, you, you know they're they're an improving team. Uh, Morto was off his game yesterday, but I I just I just think while the attitude from Galway was great yesterday, the attitude from Roscommon wasn't as good, and 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 were caught couldn't like the script was torn up torn up in the first ten minutes when Galway started, you know, controlling the game as you say by keeping possession and pen, penetrating runs, and then the, the 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 goal that was just wide of the post from Sweeney and a few other things, a few other chances. So, uh, you know, I think that's that's a great way for those young players to learn. Just a couple of the opportunities we've mentioned from yesterday, Morris, called Sweeney's goal chance in the first half. Uh, Limo Canila had two, Kieran Malloy had one towards the end. Looking back on it a day later, do you think it's a fair result or do you think, oh, I could have stole that yesterday? Yeah, just looking at my notes, I think O'Curry missed a free as well. Conroy had one wide and Tierney also missed one as well. And then the last three shots you mentioned there, which is Liam pulls two and Malloy uh, misses one. I don't know, Paul, like the Roscommon missed a lot of chances too. Like they, I think they missed six frees, did four different free takers. It'd be an interesting conversation maybe for Galway moving forward is what do they, depending on Shane Walsh's injury, what do they do from a free taking perspective? Um, I know John mentioned it already, but that's Matthew Tierney's point into the breeze off the grounds on his on his left foot was was phenomenal. Like just so, to be able to strike the ball like that into you're basically coming on the field, so you're gonna to have to try and curl it in into the teeth to that wind. And uh, it was really impressive. And he actually came very close to with a free from the other side, uh, maybe ten minutes later as well, that 
um, would have been a, re a, a great lift. So I, I thought a draw was a fair result. I think both managers kind of admitted that uh, afterwards. Definitely, uh, we did think when you saw the, only, uh, the red card and you saw uh, Conroy kick the equalizing free, you thought, okay, Galway will kick on now. But then there was a black card and there's a couple of other things. John Heaney was coming down the short there. I thought he was fouled like, when he was uh, at the top of the tee. Yeah, as we mentioned, those three wide. So I'm sure they, they would have found reason that they could have won it. There probably was reason that they could have lost it too. So boil that all down, you say a point is probably fair enough. Do you agree that a point is fair, John? Uh, yes, probably. Like uh, it, It's important to get a point on the board uh, in your second game if, if, if you've lost your first one. Uh, and I, 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 I suppose... Volo will probably be happier. You probably think that they'd have a better chance against Tyrone than maybe Roscommon would have against Dublin, because the, the, on on Saturday night Dublin, even though there were Daisy Farrell afterwards was saying, well, you know, we're it's early season and everyone is ahead of us. They wanted to win that game. There's no doubt about it. And uh, uh, so I'd say they'll be they'll be on edge in Crow Park when they meet Roscommon. So that's a big test. I mean, that'll tell a lot about uh, about Roscommon. Uh, but I know Tyrone will be smarting, but they have already have two points in the bag, so that'll be an interesting game between Galway and, and, and so I I think it was it was it was vital that you know both were desperate to win as I said, but it was vital that each of them got something out of it, and you know that's fine for a league game. It wouldn't be fine in a championship game. On that sending off, Tony Smith, there's no complaints. Uh, there is a uh, red card. Um, but just on that, Jack McCabe has the ball. He doesn't get it into his hand. The Ross Common defender gets ahead of him. He sticks out his hand. He trips him. He gets a black card. Was that a big turning point, Morris? Because we're a man ahead there. And then he gets back on for a minute at the end. But realistically, it's, it's 14 versus 14, really, for the last 10 minutes of the second half. Yeah, so Park's version afterwards was that we came back to deliberately let the ball. He was, you know, you let the ball go down the line. You try and let the ball beat the man basically and come onto it. And it was Niall Daly, wasn't it? He got there first, and um, was he tripped or did he fall? It's, I, yeah. it's it's hard to see from from where I was, but I think the situation like that, Paul, it's it's in the back of a referee's mind that uh, you've just given a red card in a very decisive game, and probably to a certain sense the, the opportunity was there maybe to. Leave it all level coming down the stretch, and uh, I suppose you know, I've been very sorry for Jack McGay, who's only on the pitch in a matter of minutes, and uh, and that happens, but so yeah, you could probably, I don't know, he could maybe take a shooter to a, to a certain extent, but uh, so these things kind of tend to come out in the wash. Like, put it this way, I don't think it was referee's fault that got to win that game, is And going from that nine all now, it's it's a point on the road, uh, it's crucial. But I suppose for a bit of perspective here, Morris, we are at this exact same situation last year, played uh, Mayo and Roscommon in the first two games, had a point from either. Uh, actually, quite similarly, last year's game against Roscommon in the league felt very similar to yesterday's game, but it's not it's not disastrous by any means, one point from your first two games. No, uh, yeah, and uh, that point was made yesterday as well, that they were in a, a very similar position. It, it is... The Mayo game was different now, definitely to the Mayo game last year. Like I, I, left, I watched that game in Castlebar, and you're thinking, okay, there's a couple of encouraging signs for for Galway there. Daniel Farty made his debut, and he was, I don't know if you remember, he was excellent that night in uh, Michael Park. So they got a lot of got minutes into a couple of new lads. Uh, did McCarthy play that day? Oh, Kelly definitely made his debut yeah. that day, and to, you know they were denied by a wonder point by Ronald Dunn who went down the stretch, whereas they just it was a total no show last week and very hard to see huge signs of encouragement. The point you make is valid, definitely about. A bit of perspective and where they're at, and even you can see there is a sense experimental is the wrong word, but they are trying things like they, they tried the human feel last uh, week. I appreciate, it, and I think it's wrong by the way that I know this game wasn't necessarily the most entertaining, but uh, I do think that at some stage we're going to get need to get to a stage where if people want to stream these games and watch them, they should be able to. So on that team, for anybody who didn't see this game, Kieran Malloy was named as wing forward, and he played there. Like he stayed, he stayed, he stayed up. To me, it looked like. Johnny Heaney came on for Owen Kelly in the, in the second half and slotted in as a wing back on that left hand side. It, was, it, it seemed to me that Sweeney was actually playing ahead of him, that he was actually coming on to the ball a lot more. So they're clearly trying to, to experiment things. Keen Darcy came on for O'Curry and then was again looked like from, from to my eyes he stayed outside in the in the inside line. So they tried 
they're trying things, they're trying to discover more. Maybe the an issue we've talked about in the past with athleticism in the half four line is that why Malloy was there and, and Sweeney certainly started there anyway. Um, and I was trying to work was a, a bit of a better balance that way. And then the broader point, the the thing about the negativity and the trying to keep it on in perspective, I think like Paul, my 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 take on this, I'm I'm biased obviously, but just from a, a media perspective, I I think you can you can quell a lot of that very easily. Like you, you can cut stuff off at source if you if you give a little. Like if for example, right, I compared to Mayo. Mayo did a pre league launch with the media, so we got to talk to players and management. And they were able to, you know, a couple of little things that just wanted to put to bed, maybe a little negative stuff that Howard carried over last year, like Salim McHale as a selector and that kind of stuff. They could just, you know, have their say, get off on a positive note, rattle into the league that way. God, we didn't do it. Damien Comer did do um, the Allianz launch for the for the league because they were in the league final last year, but God didn't do their own league launch. They have these development uh, squads out in the FED. So as a consequence of that, we don't actually hear from from uh, management to hear from development which is fair enough but because of that what happens in my opinion just this is my opinion you leave a void so if there's no, nothing you know you're not you can't confirm or deny if players are involved you can't confirm or deny injuries you can't confirm or deny the squad and because of that people in this county they love football we're all kind of mad to get as much information as possible so that gets filled with all kind of conjecture and talk and then you get a result like the Mayo game and it can just spiral rapidly and the consequence of that is right you had that void you had that results and then Park gives us some clarity around all this kind of stuff. So on top of that negative result, he confirms, no, Peter Cook isn't coming back and Killy McDade isn't around for the league and it all just spirals from there. So in my opinion, you can cut that off at his knees. Like you can just come out and give a bit of, like, a small bit of leeway. Like these are all smart, intelligent lads. If one of them wants to do an interview, maybe let them do it and let us hear from the boys. So that's, I, in my opinion, that's, it's a very easy way to, to quell that sort of stuff. Um, but to the, your broader points, like I, I wouldn't be panicking during a fine spot. That trip to Omen I would be interesting because if they don't get a result there, they're welcoming Derry to that's a home, a home game. We don't, it's down for Tune. I wonder will it be played there, but um the, 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 those back those are back to back big games. So there, there's a bit of pressure maybe on that Tyrone game if you want to preserve your division one status. But I wouldn't be I wouldn't be punishing punish panic seconds and anything like that. What's your take, John? Where go are at at the minute? Ah uh, no, I think I think they're in a, in okay of a place to be honest. Um, Lee, even during my period there when we won the All Ireland's, we didn't win any league. We got to a couple of finals, I think. But uh, I think the big the big test for that for Boris Joyce and the management and the players this year will be to get back to somewhere where they were two years ago. Like last year was a disaster from their point of view. The way that they let the Armagh game slip and then, you know, the Sean Kelly injury and playing him and so on. You know, it just, it, it, it left a, a sour taste for Galway supporters, I would assume, at the end of the year. So I think, you know, it looks like what they're planning for the, the longer view uh, for the summer with maybe a more depth in their in their squad or whatever. So I, I, I think they're all, I, I think they'll be okay, especially when they, if the injured if the injured players can get back their form, uh, whenever they come back, it would be from from their point of view, it would be good to have a couple of them back for the the next few league games. But certainly some of them won't be, and uh, I think they'll be okay. I think they'll be okay. Um, it's hard to know about what's common. They they serve. See the thing about what's common, they're I always compare them to Monaghan. They're like they won't win a huge amount, but they'll stop other teams and upset other teams. And ambush other teams, and I found that over the years as well. So the, they have a great, uh, they have a, the, you know, when you write them off, you write them off at your peril. Mayo found that out last year, but no, I think all will be, I think all will be okay, and they'll be taken heart from the fact that they're trying things out, as Morris said there, and and some of them are working. Like if Sean Fitzgerald, if he if he continues at full back and does well there, I think that's a, that could be a game changer from a from a tactical point of view for Galway. Uh, because Sean Kelly, like, is is the you know he, he he's the best player in my opinion, maybe apart from Clifford he, over the last few years. He he led everything in White Holland and he led everything in Galway, and took this huge punishment as a result of it, and and put his life on the line nearly. But uh, uh, so I think that I think Galway will be fine. John, just on a player you worked with, Robert Finnerty uh, yesterday. Maybe struggled to find that space with Ross Common playing with huge numbers uh, behind the ball. Is there 
maybe a possibility that you do try a Robert Finnerty at 11 to get him more into the game or do you think 14 you stick with him there like just I suppose what can go I do to get more out of Robert Finnerty because we all know the talent and the ability he has yeah he's he's a very talented player he's very comfortable on the ball but he's he's going through a, a difficult patch I would say like he had he had uh, has had a back problem for the last couple of years he broke down in the club championship uh, just the year gone by and the year beforehand and obviously had to deal with that but he's he's obviously the other thing I think in in the All Ireland final in in whatever year it was two years ago um, everything was channeled towards uh, Shane Walsh and it was proved that that was the right tactic because he was red hot but I think in the in the games earlier in the year, uh, like Rob Finnerty ended up with three or four points and some of them, and you know he, he needs to combine his ball handling with taking on chances as well because what what Galway have to do to be you know real championship contenders they need more than one or two full free scoring forwards and I think Rob Finnerty could be one of them. But I think he needs help maybe to, you know, to get that confidence back because there's more in him than we're seeing at the minute. Uh, but he's a very dedicated player. I, I can see a lot more from him, but, you know, that needs to be worked out with, with the management and with, with the people behind the scenes because, uh, you know, you need everyone. You need everyone a threat because if you have only one or two, if you have only one or two threats in the forwards, uh, then you know you see Kerry they can come from anywhere and that's where Galway were in, in previous times and that's where Galway need to get back to and Rob Finnerty will be crucial in that Would you move positions from around to Mars to get more out of them? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the priority as John said I think probably just get him get him fit like just from a that bad kind of spell he had last year was was a real killer and I think it actually carried into the, the club championship to a, to a certain set, John. Like I remember the, the Conor Finn game, he seemed to be carrying something that day. He actually came off injured today later. Um so if he could just get us if he could get a run, you'd have absolutely no fears. I'm not I'm not necessarily sure. Like I I've seen him he played for eleven obviously for, for Todd Hill and he's he's excellent at it. I don't think he I don't think it's his issue is that he's not getting as involved as much as as it is, it's just getting kind of that game. So I wouldn't be as as cautious of it. I wouldn't be as there, um, or maybe at the front of if they're playing two inside, even just at the, front, at the top of the line, and that way that uh, might work as well. But no, I, I'm I think the the main priority, like a lot of these lads, Paul, the main priority for for Killian, for Rob, for uh, when Liam Silly comes back in, is just getting a get a clean bill of health, and after that you could worry about tactical stuff, but sort the sort the physical one first. It's a back problem, John. It's back spasms that have been at him for the. Is it the last two years? You could say. Yeah, yeah, he has some some issue there. That's that's. I mean, in, we played two two years ago, and he he just he just uh, collapsed in that game, and uh, <coughs> um, and the same thing happened in the Corrigan game this year. So I I know that the, I'd say they're doing a lot of work on getting that right because it's. That can be a confidence sapper as well, you know. So, I think that that would be some reason. But I, 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 you'd hope I would hope that he'd get back to what he can do, uh, because you know he was crucial to Salt Hill in, in that in in the last couple of years while I was there, and I'm sure that's going to continue now. So, I, I, I yeah, I think so. But I think the overall thing for the, the as I said, that I, I think he sacrificed his game in the All Ireland. Final, you know, the channel and everything to Shane Walsh, and you know that was good on the day. But it, it, it you know, he needs to take on some of the chances because he he can get into some very good scoring positions. And I think as well as that that year, I think it, uh, he was taken off in each game. You know, so I I'm not sure that, uh, and I was surprised to see him coming off in a couple of the, you know, so I, even yesterday he he, he did. Okay, in some respects, but uh, it's it, obviously it's different in league. You're trying out things and trying out players, but 
it's it's just um, I think it's a confidence thing, and if he gets back that and gets his injury right, I think he'll be he'll be a a, 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 a severe cog cog in the wheel for Galway this year. Just something else you had touched on there, Morris, with Tier Malloy and Carl Sweeney wing forwards, and um, probably your two modern day wing forwards in one sense. Is this something you can stick go and stick him with? Depends, I depends what they're playing, Paul. I, I think an issue for me, the last, I like a three Mayo games, is that they're they're just totally lost that battle. They're overran by their athletic half back line. Like, I I, I, I appreciate why McLaughlin and Durkin got all the praise they did against Galway the first day. Um, but I thought they were they they were made to look like heroes because they were given so much space that they, they just but you know. McLaughlin is such a, a incredible athlete, and oh, McLaughlin I'm talking about here. And when he has that that runway to to power into, he just he looks he looks pretty awesome. So I thought the same thing happened actually in the preliminary game last year in, in Pierce Stadium. Uh, Dirk and got for sure he got man of the match that day as well actually. Um, and he would have got it in a league final if it wasn't for an injury to McBride at four half time, and he actually went, I don't know if you remember Dirk went in and marked Damien Comer for the second half that day, um, which maybe took took up slightly away from their half back then. But I think yeah, that's I think. That move was a reaction to what happened last week, that they weren't going to be over. And I'd say Galway had a fair indicator. Roy Fallon came back into the University of Galway team for the Sigurdsson Cup on Wednesday. I'd say it was a fair indication that he was going to play for Roscommon, even though he wasn't named in the match the panel that, that came in. So they all probably knew that they're going to need to deliver to the likes of him to, to a certain respect. And they just went for went for the two boys who were who were run and run for you all day. Um, and they, they do have a, a scoring threat too, so there probably is a a slightly balanced to it so I think yeah it's horses for courses I could see it depending on who they're playing I could see something similar happen again yeah Just on this whole thing at the minute of the injuries in Everton um, obviously Jack Lane Liam Silk Damien Comer uh, Shane Walsh Kitty McDade and Tom o- I'm not sure what the story with Tom O'Gallan was he was named in the 26 but um, he wasn't in the 26 Yeah I think he broke down on Thursday night as far as I'm aware Okay, so but that's... just on that, John. When do you need to start seeing some of these players coming back in the league? Well, I think it would be vital that they'd be back for the some of them anyway. Uh, Killian McDade had a break of his fibia, is it or fibia or something? So maybe that's why he's out for the league altogether. But I, I think you know, I didn't think that apart from Sean Kelly. I mean, they want to put cotton wool around him until he's fully right. But I think some of the others, you would hope, like Damien Comer was named last week. Uh, and I saw him there on the sideline, not talked yesterday. Um, so they do need to get some of them back. Like it's, it's the need to, in other words, not go into the first round. Of the, well, I think maybe they have Leitrim. Or, is it Leitrim they have? Uh, London first. London first, yeah. yeah. So maybe there'll be an opportunity, if you like, to ease them back in those games. Otherwise... That need to maybe get back for the last couple of games in the in the, in the league, uh, and I think that'll be that'll be um, probably the aim at this stage with some of them. Now maybe Damien Comer might be back sooner than that, but uh, yes, I think it's vital that they kind of get acclimatized uh, because remember, if they're suffering those injuries, there's also you know they can work in the gym or whatever, but they need to get the the bank of training involved as well, you know, in there. So that that'll be ah, that's that's uh, that's the medical teams. I'm sure they'll be handling all that and the strength and conditioning people because uh, it's important to you know to to um, prevent injuries than have to solve them. Uh, I think that's a big lesson for Galway this year, uh, and I think they're they're obviously going about that in a more cautious way. So. Thing the, the the thing you mentioned there about the the half forwards yesterday with Kieran Malloy and and Carl Sweeney like Carl Sweeney was played at corner forward I know he was drifting out of it but he, he's not a corner forward he can he he's a way he's a massive player when he's facing the goals uh, at wing back or wing forward is is ideal too because it means that whoever you have at at wing back then. He can he can slot back if there's you know if there's an attack going on or whatever. So I think that he should never be played in full in the full forward line. That now that's just talking from what I, you know, the information I gathered over the last 
the last uh, couple of years. But he's he's a he's a real he's a real important player for Galway as well because he's an engine to go for Ireland. You know. Yeah, he really showed that yesterday. And and Malloy, like the transformation of him in the week, like he mm. he hardly got a kick of the ball against Mayo, like whereas yesterday he played an important part and he got possession a lot and he got a point and whatever. So he he his his. His head was right for yesterday. Well, let's put it like that. Does Donna Morris, would you like to see some of these players back for Tyrone or do you think it's going to be very much a sensor if they're right or not? Um, it's hard to know. Like, going back to my point earlier, not a huge amount of information about you know, what's going on with even you go deeper than the names you listed there like Patrick Kelly or the likes that we haven't seen enough kind of parties involved in Fitz and Sigerson, but maybe a bit of clarity around that wouldn't wouldn't go astray. I think, as far as I understand, I I don't I think Kieran McDade was making good progress with the tibia and the injury that he's out with now is actually his groin. It's a thing that went on for a certain extent during the year last year. And as John mentioned, they're just being ultra cautious with that. And I think that's probably why there's a fair chance we won't see him in the, the league. Maybe the likes of lads who have been in and out of training and um are kind of trying to just get the Kind of a tip, like you know, another two weeks. Would you see Damien come, or you'd certainly hope so? Um, that there's the scope for the likes of them maybe to come back in, but I'm not necessarily sure. If we're going to see Sean Kelly, we're going to see Shane Walsh, or we're going to see, um, uh, you know, the, the Kitty McDade. I don't think so. I think the beyond that, it's kind of what, what 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 we have there, what we have there, and just on that, Paul, I do think there's an element of. Uh, it was funny yesterday we asked David Burke about. Because Ross Conner dealing with a similar thing to a certain extent. You know, you look at the uh, Daly's gone away, McKeown, who's a right good option for them, is, is gone too. We still haven't seen Alton Harney, who's, who's come back. Tiger Rock, we haven't seen. Carl Heaney, who a lot of people in Galway will be familiar with. There's no sign of him yet. Um, So there have a lot of lads to come back in. But yeah, anyway, somebody mentioned it in passing about the Dublin game. Where are they going to come back in? And David Burke just went that, like gave this big, long answer about, oh, we will never fall into that trap. Like he, And he's, he's talking about Ross Conner now, I mean. Uh, we'll never fall into the trap. Like, who are we missing? Who are we missing? He said there shouldn't be much that much difference between an A versus a B. He's totally happy with what he has. He's not going to go pining after lads to come back and hopefully they'll save the day. He wants to hit his marks with the squad that's available. And I think that's such a positive message. Like, don't be, don't be talking about who's not there and don't because you know, what message that sent to, the, to your group. I oftentimes I think when managers John would be better on this than I am, but I think in post match situations like that, managers aren't really talking to the media. They're talking to their own players. They're talking to the group. They're trying to get the message to them that. Don't be looking for them to come back. Like I, I expect G to deliver. And there's an element of that with Galway too. That you know you're you're thrown in here. You're we're gonna see what as Sean Fitzgerald has made of as he's shown over the last two games. You're gonna see Owen Kelly's gonna get that exposure. You're gonna see Curran, you're gonna see O'Connelly. Let them let them prove it now. Like don't be waiting for lads to come back. Obviously, you want them to be mixing with an established team, but I don't I think this this idea that you're gonna be pining for everybody to come back and you're gonna have your perfect 15, that's not a reality. Like look at the Look at the history of the GA. Look at look at Limerick for the last couple of years. I won't say it's Limerick last year were missing their captain, their all four time in a row all star running back in Sean Finn and Keane Lynch, and John Kylie didn't miss a beat out of him. Like didn't didn't strike. And I think that's the the tone you want to set moving forward. That's something, John. I presume as a manager, you just want to get into the group if you're missing players or or no matter. I suppose I suppose what goal I want out of this league is probably to develop a panel and then if there is a player or two missing that these players are able to step in seamlessly. Yeah, like you know, we're talking here about all because I suppose there's so many um uh, missing from goal at the minute. But when you're in the four walls of a dressing room your 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 G like your hope as a manager as well is that some of these New entrants will will actually uh, um, make it more competitive for the starting fifty, uh, and that's what the message you're giving them on a one to one. Like it's 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 a pro. It, you need to uh, managers and selectors need to have a problem coming into championship. Like who do we? You know, such a one has been going well. If if it's Sean Fitzgerald or whatever, you know, so that creates competition within the squad so you may necessarily start your early championship games without one some of your star names and that's what you want to that's what you want to that's when you're happy if you like that they have to fight and to think that you know any team where everyone is automatic is not 
the ingredients you want to win championships. What you need is cutthroat competition. And, um, you know, I see Armad this year. They're playing a lot of new players as well. And I know someone was talking to Kieran Donaghy on Saturday night after the game. And, and uh, he said, I'm looking forward to the A versus B games now when some of these, when their players are coming back. So that's what you want to create as a, as a manager. So, you know, the supporters and obviously the media and whatever are always talking. And I'm now outside the fence. So I'm talking about missing players as well. But, uh, Inside the inside the confines of the dressing room, you're praying that some of these young guns will, will really, uh, you know, I had that in second All Ireland in two thousand and one, where where Kieran Fitzgerald and Joe Bergen, you know, they were getting their runs in two thousand and whatever, but this they, they nailed down the place seriously for two thousand and one, and at the end of the day, that was the difference and the freshness that we needed to 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 win that eventually. Are Galway beginning to create this march, or is it too soon to tell? No, I think they are. Like, I, I wouldn't go overboard with it either. I definitely towards the latter stages of last year, you would have argued that they had better depth than they did a year previous. Um, the some of these injuries you can't count for some of them. Fingers crossed, you will. Um, you'd like to see a bit more exposure for maybe some of the lads who showed it that bit of promise. But like Daniel Ferrati, you now I thought even in the series finish, he's shown real form. You kind of you'd like to see maybe a bit more of a reward for that As, and opposed what John mentioned earlier it's very tough for a lad like that in a FED final to, to come in alongside a bunch of rookies and be expected to, to lead the way like I think the players like that actually need to be playing around more established lads and they'll kind of progress through but I think they are starting to, to get that time you saw you know Kieran O'Curry came in obviously off the back of the 20s last year and his progression has, has followed along along similar lines so they're starting to develop certain options but and you know, there's not going to wait. The rally is obviously they'll be way stronger when the those boys come back in. But you have to deal with the, the hand you're dealt with as well. And I just from a, I I probably meant more so from a psychological element than the actual squad. So to, to a certain extent, there is a bit of depth there. Not to the probably not to the extent that we would like it to be, but they are they're de- definitely making progress. Just finally, then Pork uh, talked yesterday to the Sunday game um, after the results and he talked that we haven't won a league in however long it is and that uh, it's still something they're targeting to win the league but in reality do you think the first game is survival first and, and then the rest take care of itself John? Yeah I think I, I think that I, I was actually surprised to hear Park said that yesterday you know because I don't think Losing to me on the league final last year did them any good either, uh. So I was a bit surprised, but obviously, you know, you sometimes you find yourself in a league final without, you know, if you pick up like Mayo now that picked up four points, they could find themselves back in the league final and having to play was common the following week again, uh, this year. So you know, I, I sometimes yeah, I mean, everyone aims to win every game, I suppose. But they're they're not in a state of depression if it doesn't go their way, and I don't think all are in a state of depression now. You know, on it only got one point. Just coming back to what Morris said there, I, I, Daniel O'Flaherty seems to be a little forgotten man. I mean, my experience of him in the last two years was the bigger the game, the better he got. You know, in the county final against Mike Holland two years ago, and and again he had a massive game. So you know, he is a young player with great potential. So. Uh, you know, and now is the opportunity to try some of those guys. Tom O'Callaghan is another one. If you, if it was injury free, because it, remember he was crucial in their under twenty win a few years ago. So you know that's you know if they come out of the league having tried out some of those guys, uh, I think you know the future will be will be bright for them. What do you think they're taking in Mars? I, I don't park is. More on time I spent around him, you realise he is he's he's conscious of history, you know. He definitely is aware of golly football lore and I remember John before the two thousand twenty two All Ireland final. Yeah, twenty twenty two we did a press day in Pierce Stadium and spoke kind of the when he was at his most expressive and spoke long so was talking about personal coming into the dressing room in ninety eight and the kick day got out of that and it was his uncle, actually, Billy, who was on that 81 team that won the last league title. And I'd say that, that carries a, a personal significance for him, definitely. The fact that it's going back as long as it is and wanting to insert. So 
if there was a chance there to get a league title, I'm sure he wouldn't turn his nose up to it. But the reality is, they're, I think they are taking a long term view. Like I think they're not going to they're not going to go gung ho for that and risk it, it backfiring on them. And especially Paul, we haven't, uh, as John hinted at it there, we haven't addressed the calendar. The fact that if you make a league final, if you're Galway Mayo, you're out a week later. So Galway in London, Mayo in New York, like that's an that a wee turnaround for that is tough going. Even I know you can talk about the opposition all you want, but it still is it's a tricky one to manage. So I'm not necessarily sure is it their pressing priority to get into a league final and be risk that exposure. I suppose is the word. But so if the chance was there for them, I'm sure they'll go for. I don't think they're going out to to lose any game. Definitely know that they're. Yeah, I want to retain your status 100%. So I'd say that we'll see that Tyrone game, you'd expect to see a much better performance again from what we saw last weekend. Um, But yeah, their priorities, their priorities are somewhere. You can see that in the way their selection, you can see the hints of it in, I know he said that yesterday, but if you take a broader sample of what he said, there's probably hints in that too, that he, they all seem to be pretty conscious that they're building for, for championship. The Tyrone game is obviously going to tell a lot of uh their ambitions for uh, the rest of the league, whether that'll be uh, pushing on or just about surviving in Division 1. Before we do finish, uh, John, you, you stepped away from Salt Hill. Was, was that a difficult decision? It was, because uh, it was. But I I had, a, uh, I suppose when I went in two years ago, I kind of insisted on a whole Salt Hill backroom team and that the aim would be that I would hand over the bat, you know, to these, uh, to the, you know, the Sean Armstrongs, the Finian Hanleys, the, the, the Norman Costellos, you know, because I always say, or say, you know, try and encourage clubs to have their own management teams. But So it was kind of, it, it, that was part of it. Then I had a couple of health problems last year as well, and I didn't, I didn't, I wanted to give that a little bit more attention. I'm fine, by the way, but I, I just during the, the summer period last year, I, I did have a few and, and uh, I didn't want it to become a distraction, if you like, for a team or anything like that. So, no, I, I, I enjoyed it very much. Uh, and I'm delighted that Finney, and, you, you know, continuity was important. And I, I'm delighted that uh, Finney and, and Sean and, and uh, Norman are continuing and, you know, I'm not sure who else they've got in or whatever, but um, Des Sheeran played a big part in it last year as well. He stepped away as well, but uh, it, continuity was vital because if we all just walked away, it would mean that, you know, the new management would come in totally new and that would they'd take a while to get their feet under the table. So I was delighted to, to, to recommend to the club when I heard that they would continue. So uh, that, that was it. I know I'll miss it. And all the rest of it, but uh, it's time maybe I got sense too. You know? So, uh, I no, but it'll be it'll be uh, it'll give me uh, plenty of time to get round to all these other intercounty matches now and all that. So I won't be far away, but I'll be I'll be outside the fence rather than inside the fence. Can you see yourself managing in the club game again, or do you think? I I look at. I could I could be back in the club game as it is at the minute, but no, I'm I'm not doing anything for this year. Brent. I'll, just, I'll see. And I, I, you know, I'm what what people don't realise. Maybe I started intercounty management at Rushley One Eleven in 1983. That's a few years ago now. So, uh, and I enjoyed every minute. Of it, but you you need to know, you know, you know, you need to know when to maybe step away as well. I do, I'm not sure, but I'll miss it and I enjoy it. But I I have enough. Uh, like our chat now about yesterday and so on so we'll, we'll, we won't be far away Good stuff well that's all we do have uh, time for on the podcast for today uh, thanks a million to Morris and John for coming on